Uh, well, John, great to get to chat with you again for uh, for the Orville. I this season has just blown me away with every episode. It truly has. Um, so I guess we weren't, we weren't exaggerating when we said it'll be worth the wait. <laughs> no, you really weren't. Uh, I, I last time I talked with with you guys, yeah, you were very eager about it, and uh, um, you, you've you've done well so far. Uh, what has it been like for you seeing the responses after this long wait? <laughs> it, it, it's been it's been so satisfying. It's been so great. It, you know, it's it just reminding us again what what good work everyone did on the show and and that we were right. <laughs> you know, I mean, we it, it took so long to do this 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 season just because of COVID mostly, and you know, and the way it worked out. So it was really exciting to see that finally people got to see it but you know i think even when we were shooting it we i think by that point we we kind of know our fan base at this point and 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 look we're all we're all kind of geeks ourselves so i think we were geeking out on it first and thinking well if we're geeking out on it they're going to geek out on it too so so i think we had a, a really good idea that they were going to love what we were doing and the stories were so good i mean just reading the scripts was fantastic let alone you know putting them to, to the, put the visuals to them and the actors to them and then they just elevate it to a whole new level, you know. So what I love about the stories in this season is that they are, you know, you guys have taken the opportunity of your streaming home to really make feature length stories, essentially. And even though you're no stranger to feature length, I mean, what was it? What is it like for you to, you know, be bringing that extra runtime to this show? Well, I mean, it's so great because because you shoot it like a feature in a way because, you know, a feature doesn't have any any out time. It can be whatever it wants. It could be an hour and 20 minutes. It could be four hours. I mean, a feature is, you know, they don't have that limit in storytelling. And, and it's it's a it's a it's kind of a crippling limit in, in television, especially in, on network television. You have 42 minutes. That That's it. And the problem is when you shoot a show. You know, you shoot a script that's 60 pages or 50 pages, sometimes you have 60 minutes. So you're cutting a lot of stuff out that no one is ever going to see. And the way that Seth writes his scripts and works, which is very different than anyone I've worked with, you're shooting exactly what he wrote and you're and the audience is seeing exactly what he wrote. So nothing ends up on the cutting room floor. It, it truly is a crafted complete story with all the beats in there. So you, you're not just kind of doing the story and a lot of shows start going, well, let's put that scene over there and let's move that scene over there and let's cut that scene in half and let's add dialogue in that scene. Seth doesn't do that. Seth writes the episode. That's the episode. That's what you shoot. And so, you know, having that restriction for him was, was deadly because he'd have his episode, he'd love his episode. And now the editors are saying, yeah, you got to trim out four minutes. And he's like, I don't want to trim out any. Well, you have to because we're on network. So no one was there to say you have to now. And so we end up with a show that's an hour and 26 minutes. But, you know, on the other hand, it did it did it lag? Did it do, you know, it, it was a it was a great show. It, it worked, it worked at an hour and 26 minutes. Yeah, I uh I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about the longer run times, but at the same time, like when I pulled up a couple episodes today, it, it, those three hours flew by because I was just so invested in those stories. Yeah. Um, yeah, thing. And and oh, the no, other sorry, plus sorry, this is a huge plus for me, is that all those beautiful fly-ins to the planet that you see the Orville going through nebulas. That's the stuff that would have got cut. I mean, the re and the reality is you cut that stuff out. I mean, some of my best shots I've ever done for television are on the cutting room floor because they were it was too long and you're going to cut stuff out without dialogue. And that's, that's what film has over television. They get to do those beautiful visual shots that just their storytelling with visuals without any dialogue. And they, because again, they don't have a res restraint on time. So that's the other plus. Sorry to, to jump so that in. With TV directing, we'll often see uh, some directors bring their own little uh, flair or or style to their episodes. And so I'm curious, you know, for you, is there anything that you like to add specifically into all of your episodes to sort of make it yours even more than it already is? Not, not really. I mean, quite honestly, as sort of a journeyman television director, you're, you're trying to fit in more than anything else. You're trying to go and, and find out, you know, what what that is. I mean, I did change the visuals on, on, on Orville basically from season one to season three. I think you can see it. I mean, there's a difference. It's more of a cinematic kind of look to it. And so I was able to do that, you know, with, with Seth's permission and, and talking to him and, and asking him what he wants to do the visuals. So, you know, 
it was partly because he, he wanted to change them too. So that was part of it. But uh, no, I try to fit in. And quite honestly, I always slave to the story. You know, I, I think if, if anything, if I have any kind of signature is when you see my action, because that's kind of, you know, what my trademark was on, on 24 and other shows. So, you know, that first scene in, uh, in, in the very first episode, that was like set saying here, this is, it's my episode, but here, go ahead. This is all you. So, so that was my kind of like, oh yeah, okay. This is what, this is, you know, this is, I live for this stuff. So that, that was kind of fun for me. So yeah, that kind of action, you know, and there's a little more coming, you'll see in the next couple episodes. So there's a little more coming your way, but, but uh, yeah, that, that more than anything else. And then I think what we did with the visuals with our new DP, I think looked pretty, pretty impressive. Even the bridge looked better. I think everything looked better this year. I yeah, I completely agree. the The increase in budget definitely shows this season. It's been uh, yeah. phenomenal. Um, and now, uh, with with talking about Seth, uh, I'm curious. You know, how did you two determine which episodes who was going to film? Since this has pretty much just been you two this whole season. Yeah, I mean, Seth Seth usually sort of takes the more intimate sort of episodes, and then I get the one with like. 15 people talking so that that's sort of <laughs> that's how it broke down so you know so so but no he he gives me the ones that he knows have more action in them and so you know they're kind of you know i lean towards them but quite honestly because of covid when we came back we were halfway through shooting we were like five four and a half episodes finished or or close to finished and so the next you know five episodes five and a half episodes we basically because I had three pregnant actresses I had to shoot around. So that was already a massive challenge. Then we had all our COVID challenges of we only could have 20 people, you know, in that, on, as extras. So we couldn't shoot the big, you know, Krill scene. We couldn't shoot certain scenes because of that. So those all had to get pushed back. The scene you saw last week with, with uh, or, or two weeks ago, with Bordas doing, you know, the song in the shuttle bay, that was virtually the second last day of shooting. Because by that time, the rules had, you know, changed. So we were allowed to have more and more extras. So, and even then we were restricted to 15 minutes with 200 extras. That was it to get that scene. It was a very huge challenge. So, so a lot of that, and, and because the two of us just did it together, thank God, because there was no way we were going to bring it, directors back and forth. So every day we virtually both sat on the, on the, on the stage together, sitting there together. And I direct a scene and he direct a scene. And so it went back and forth. That's kind of how we did it. It was, Kind of like the Cohen brothers, I think. <laughs> a little bit of, you know, you do this and I do this. And it was all sort of all in-house in a way. Well, it probably was for the better as well to really help keep it feeling uh, all united um, yeah, for you guys. There's a, continuity. there's a continuity for sure for everybody, for the actors, for the crew, you know. And, and then, you, you know, both of us know the show. And I think more shows are leaning towards doing that anyways, you know, having less directors and people that know the show and you know television's changed television's like one big movie now i mean it used to be a different director if you had 22 episodes you had 22 directors you know that's that was the old sort of way of doing it now it's more and more shows are having less directors and having continuity in direction it's it, it's kind of important in a way i think to have continuity in direction yeah, I uh, I completely agree. Um, now, with the the uh, mention of COVID challenges, I'm curious: was there any one episode that proved the most challenging to to shoot around those uh, health protocols? Well, right out of the gate, uh, episode three, which is you know the episode where they're virtually off the ship, and we had to shoot that right away. That was the first one one we shot because the ship was getting a huge refit, as you obviously saw we change everything the floors the walls like everything was changed so we couldn't go near that set for the first two months they were like too busy fixing it so or re refitting it so we picked that episode because if you remember most of it is is you know i was going to say in another planet but it's not it's in that sort of dream world and so that one was challenging right out of the gate because you know we're on location so not everybody would was going, hey, come on and shoot in our place with all you COVID people coming in. So that was the first challenge was like, you couldn't get locations, you know, restrict locations became restrictive. How many people you could have in a room became restrictive. So that one right out of the gate was the hardest for us. And, you know, testing was new. No one was vaccinated yet. Pretty much people were risking their lives. I mean, we were coming to work risking our lives. I mean, we were getting tested every day. So that was a good part of it, but it was still a scary situation, quite honestly, if you remember, no one wanted to leave their house and here we are shooting, 
you know, and, and out there shooting. And we were very safe and we, you know, knock on wood, never really had any problems. So, but again, we tested every day, including weekends, by the way. So, you know, we, we tested even on our days off to make sure everyone was, you know, safe. And that's, that's always good to hear. Cause yeah, above all else, we want to make sure everybody's safe, whether it be in front of or behind the camera. Yeah. Um, now, last time we talked, uh, I had brought up cameos and you said you you teased me saying you had the best one on your phone and you couldn't show me. And was I'm I curious, wrong? <laughs> was Dolly the the cameo you were talking about? Yeah, Dolly was that cameo. <laughs> Come on, I wasn't exaggerating. You got to admit that. No, that was a huge cameo. I mean, that was that was pretty was awesome to, yeah. to see. Uh, yeah. I, I did not expect that callback. So uh, how did that come about? You know, what was it like working with her for that episode? Well, it was great. I mean, you know, we, we saw it in the script and because of course our, our, you know, our production schedules, you know, stretched out so long, you know, it was almost like the weekly question. Do we have Dolly yet? Are we shooting Dolly? Is that a new scene? Is that going to be something different? So that went on for months. <laughs> actually and so because again we weren't shooting in any kind of order it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and then you know i mean seth was virtually a dog you know without with a bone on this one there was no way he was giving up on dolly no way at all and finally he you know he he, he got her to 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 say yes and then she was excited about doing it and then of course there was lots of restrictions and that's why i mean you've heard the way we did it we virtually had to shoot half of it in Nashville and half of it in LA because she didn't want to get on a plane. We didn't blame her. No one wanted to get on a plane back then. And then she didn't want a whole bunch of crew members coming from LA to her little Nashville world. So, so it, it became a compromise of, okay, I'll do it. You have to do it here. You have to do it in my studios. You can't bring any of your people. So we had all these restrictions. And I remember Seth going, what are we going to do? And, you know, I've had experience. I mean, most directors have experience shooting one way on one set and two weeks later, the other way on another set and no one knowing. It's what we do all the time. So we virtually built the cabin in L.A., cut it in half and took half of it to, you know, send half of it by by truck. We had it all lit and planned out. We knew what the lights were, where the cameras are going to be, the heights of the cameras, the lenses of the cameras, because, again, Part of the visual style is our people, our creative people, our direct, you know, director of photography, Jeff McGad, all his people, his camera operators, his lighting guys. So we wanted it to look the same. We didn't want to go there and do sort of a, a version that didn't look like it belonged on our show. So that was our, our solution to doing it is that we would do all that creative work for them. And they would just have to put it together and then point the cameras, basically. And of course, I was there to oversee it. And so that's the way we did it. And it was it was a... Four of us went, only four of us went. We were on a private plane. We left at night. We got there at night. We were tested. In the morning at eight o'clock, we were shooting Dolly Parton. By noon, we were on a plane and we were back in LA 24 hours later, less than 24 hours. Like it was that fast. And she was so good. We, we got it done in no time. She knew her dialogue inside and out. She loved the the storytelling of, she just loved the whole script. And then having Rena there was great because they connected right away. You know, they, they, I heard them talking in between takes and they, you know, Rena grew up in the mountains just like Dolly did. And so they became two mountain girls that were just chatting away. So it was, that was great to see also. And then she really knew her stuff and she just came through. I mean, it was just, it was just really great. And she couldn't be nicer about the whole thing. And now she's tweeting about it too, which is great. So it was, it was a win-win all the way, all around. And then I think it's a win for the viewers. So I think, I think it was great that, that we did it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that's really impressive, uh, given the steps that you yeah, took. Uh, it comes through very well. Um, yeah, but when Dolly says these are the limitations, we're going to go, no problem. We'll figure this out somehow, <laughs> and we did. So, Well, you pulled it off well. Um, before I let you go, since you did mention 24 a couple of times, I am a fan of that show as well. And, you know, Excellent. there's always been the talk of, will Jack come back? Is there another revival happening? And I'm curious, since you were such a – vital part of that whole franchise what are your thoughts on a possible uh continuation just notice your 24 thing back there i just noticed oh, yeah. uh, there it is uh it, it could happen i mean they've been talking about it for years it, it it's it's a tough one it's how do you come back and how do you you know how do you come up with another story i know they've tried many times i've seen many scripts of different versions there was even a, a movie version there was one version that was supposed to be the, the last Die Hard you saw was supposed to be a 24 
you know, John McClane, uh, you know, mix. So, so everything has been thrown at the wall to see if they can come up with anything, but no one's really come up with, with enough of a story to, to, to make it happen. And then, you know, it's the appetite of, of Fox basically who owns it. So it's going to be them. And then if they get Kiefer back who, you know, I, I just did Kiefer's new show rabbit hole, which is kind of exciting. It's a new show for uh, Paramount plus, I believe. And so I just did an episode of that up in Toronto. So, you know, he's got other projects going and then he's got his touring. So that's a that's a tough one to work around because when he does his European tours, he's gone for months. So there's there's a lot of factors. It could happen. It'd be great, I think, if it happened. But, you know, everyone's always asking me, it's like, I'll know when you know, quite honestly. I, I'm the last guy that knows. The whole thing happens and then they call me and say, do you want to direct it? So uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going to know the same time you do. You probably know before me. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for that and then we'll also have to keep our eyes peeled for a season four announcement now that you guys are going to disney plus as well i i get the feeling that they're confident in bringing you guys back for more well that was that was a nice announcement i didn't know anything about that until seth announced it the other day so it's it's pretty exciting that that that's happening and it's interesting because in canada when i was doing keeper show it plays on disney plus orville i was watching all the orville episodes on disney plus so I, I think maybe that was part of the part of the decision too. Was going look, it's doing really well on Disney Plus in, in other countries because Hulu only exists in America. It doesn't exist outside of America. And so, first of all, kind of going to the going to the Disney Plus page and seeing Star Wars, Marvel, and Orville all up on that banner. I kind of like that. There was something kind of cool about that. So, and you know, they got a lot of sci-fi on Disney Plus. So, uh, you know, high-end sci-fi. So. Maybe we'll pull in some new new audience members, which would be which would be great. That that would go a long way to getting you that renewal. So we will yeah, keep our fingers it. crossed. And I am looking forward to when these final two episodes drop. John, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me again. I greatly appreciate it. You're very welcome. A nice jacket, by the way. Uh, thank you. Yes, I uh, came in the mail earlier this week and I was, or last week, and I was like, "Oh, I'm definitely wearing this in any order." <laughs> <laughs> showed it to me, and I said, "That's a nice present for people." I gotta tell you, that, that's a that's a keeper. Yeah, absolutely. Once once it gets cold out here again, I'll be able to wear it in public. <laughs> watching, I'll uh, I'll be watching out to see what you think about these last two episodes because we we got to go out with a bang now. We yeah. Came this You've set up some pretty emotional beats, so it'll be, uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Well, so yeah, but again, thank you so much, John. I, I really do appreciate it.